I wouldn't call it a dream. It's more of a nightmare. These Njinjis are amazing. I hope you have had a good run. Status update. Uh, legs are fatigued. I've been able to just walk, but just one foot after the other. Just one foot after the other. So this morning I'm at Wiseman's Overlook. I think that's what it's called. It's basically off the old 105 highway. And today I am doing the 105 marathon. That way leads down. This way leads to the start and to Linville Falls. And a huge thank you to Brandon and Addie. As I was standing there, they said that they were headed the other direction to the end. So I asked them if they would take the two water bottles, which means <laughs> I will have water at the turnaround, which, oh my God, you'll, you'll see why that's important later, but. So I had asked a few friends to do this with me and all of them politely declined. And this is the reason why. Old Highway 105 is a forest service road and it's all gravel. And it is steep in section. The thing to remember about old Highway 105 is what goes up must come down and what goes down must come up. For years I always worried about the elevation of a course when I was going out to do some type of adventure. I would always look at the incline but the longer I've done this the more I've started paying attention to the actual descent. I do still pay attention to the incline, but not as much. Yeah, in the ultra running or the long distance, you you walk the hills. It's a easy way to kind of recover. And I don't mean recover in the sense of like a rest. I mean, it's a, the ability to slow your pace uh, and just allow your muscles to kind of not take the impact but it's the descents that really get you my cadence will increase and if i'm not careful i actually start taking on impact injury and it will fatigue me and potentially cause injury that i won't feel until later in the run it's one one of the things that i unfortunately have had to learn the, the hard way Wiseman's view, four miles is where I started from. There's old 105. Yeah. We'll now take a moment, grab something to eat. And so after a little short break, we start. Now, give you a little update. 3,301 feet is the starting elevation from Wiseman's from Wiseman's to this current spot I have climbed 630 feet but I have descended 825 the trail gods have shined down on me nice gentleman right back there Dale saw me climbing and uh, came and gave me a bottle of water never turned down a bottle of water <laughs> in July and climbing she's Dale oh man thank you for the bottle of water so so good slightly cold too oh my god not sure if you can see that. 
97. 1,000 feet of elevation. God, look these action cams suck it. Showing grade, but man, that is a freaking steep grade uh, climb right there, man. So real quick stop at this beautiful overlook. And while I tell you, uh, so for years I've struggled with get, uh, calories and nutrition on my runs. And it's not been because I couldn't get calories in, it's because I would be running for a long distance of time and just forget to put calories in. Something that I've started doing is, uh, I run with the Koros watch. I've been running with this watch. Uh, this is the Pace 2, just recently got it, but something that it has on it, which I think all active tracker watches have is a nutrition reminder mine's set for 30 minutes so every 30 minutes it reminds me to get calories in yeah i would run for an hour two hours three hours no calories in and all of a sudden bonk and be like miserable and just because i'm not getting calories in this little 30 minute one was a uh, cola bagu ah, i mean it's 100 calories and uh, yeah, now we let it let it settle for just a little bit, and then it kicks in, and we keep going. One of the reasons why I love 105 is for this view. They call this the Grand Canyon of the East Coast because it's just gorgeous. So, 105 can get pretty chopped out uh, at times and seasons. And if you're to look right here, I mean, that is a gnarly washout. Like, she's a little status update. Currently, God, I got a rock in my shoe. Which, by the way, these Njinjis are amazing. As you can see, I got a hole in my toe. I uh, will push that back. Get this freaking rock out. And wipe your foot off before you put it back in. So, status update 13.5 miles in. So four hours in, it's telling me I need to take some nutrition. Oh, this is exciting. First cyclist I've seen today. Bravo, bravo. Are you doing the two gorges? Oh, fun. Oh, so cool. Oh, that's fun. Right there is where the gravel ends, which means I'm gonna take some time and rest, get some calories in, but let's see. Look, oh man. They even left a nice note. Addy and Brandon, hope you have had a good run and enjoy the water. Man, thank you so much, guys. So it begins with a bar and some tailwind. And 10 miles to the finish. Well, I'll stop for this beautiful view. Yeah. And this uh, awesome couple, I had a few uh, empty water bottles and a little bit of trash and they were nice enough to take it, which I know is just ounces, but uh, just man, uh, helps so much so we'll keep going you remember me telling you about the climbs oh, holy crap currently 
say 24 and a half miles, which means I'm about three and a half miles from the end. So I got about another hour at the pace I'm going, but got two monster hills to climb. The adventure's not over, but man, it got dark there for a while. I uh, kind of kept the camera off because I was battling heat exhaustion and um, doing my best to keep the calories down that I had put in. I mean, like, I was struggling. I wanted to try to just keep my head down and focus and just kept moving. I think a lot of times in these adventures you can kind of put yourself at the next hill or at the next hurdle and do yourself a disservice and really get into a negative space because of what you're coming up to not actually what you're at and that's definitely been quite a few times today but at this moment put one foot in front of the other and talking with this couple right here it was such a blast they were such an encouragement i needed it man i am bonking so hard and at, at one of the steepest parts on the trail and uh yeah she rides motorcycles she has a youtube channel called she's shifting gears uh if you go up to the top it'll have a link to her channel or in the description definitely check her out but thank y'all so much for the conversation man definitely was a game changer uh so i greatly appreciate it well i better not let this moment pass because this is what it was all about the 105 marathon and that is 26.2 miles <laughs> i did it in like six hours 59 minutes the seven hour mark just hit so i will take that that car right there if you remember back to the earlier of the video he got some of my trash and so they've been hiking and uh he just pulled up beside me and asked me if i wanted a bottle of water oh man not only did they give me a water a cold water but they gave me a banana man I tell you, one, I'm emotionally drained, but I could cry right now because they don't know me. And, uh, man, I'm so grateful uh, to them for one. I mean, they could have driven past, but he actually drove while I was on the hill and asked me if I was doing okay. <sighs> yeah. And so, yeah, I'm going to eat this banana. <laughs> Just probably eat this banana and cry. This is where I started, which means I did it. 28 miles, 28.61 miles with an elevation gain of 4,900 feet, almost 5,000. So a little debrief from this. There were a lot of times I almost gave up fighting heat exhaustion, uh, trying to keep the food that I had taken in down that was doing its best to come up. I've drank over four and a half liters of water. Luckily, I put on a healthy supply of chamois butter, uh, which has helped alleviate the hot spots and rashes. It's not all gone. I am hurting. I'm extremely proud of myself. <laughs> this was hard. Really hard. But until next time, adios.